Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been 24 hours since you've seen me, but it's been only 24 seconds since I've seen you because, well, I just got done filming that last video. I don't wear these clothes every single day, but I will be for you Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday this week, unless things change. Anyway, we'll see. We are now talking about the law of supply. And there's one part about the law of supply that's easier, so I'll start with it, is the fact that as the price of a product increases, price goes up, the quantity, 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 keyword, remember things that shift the whole curve are over here, but if it's just price changing, then just quantity changes. You move along the curve, let me finish my sentence. The quantity supplied increases. What's easy about that? Well, I'll say it again without pausing and having such a big tangent in the middle. As the price of a product increases, the quantity supplied increases. Same direction, increase, increase, vice versa. Meaning that as the price of a product decreases, the quantity supplied, decreases. Okay. That's the only thing about the law of supply that's easy. Unfortunately, everything else is a little bit harder. Here's what's most challenging about the law of supply. You are not business owners, you're high school students. So you're way more accustomed to purchasing products and thinking about getting a great low price than you are about getting a great high price when you're selling something, unless you have experience with the current cafe. So again, when you're thinking about the law of supply or a supply curve, or anything with supply, you have to think of yourself not as a consumer, but as the business owner, or the supplier, or the producer. Those are the only things we talk about a lot of supply. So, a high price is great, because you're getting a lot of revenue for your store. Again, so, a really high price, fantastic, I want to sell a lot. Quantity supply. When the price is really low, well, uh, I don't want to sell a whole lot, and a lot of times you'll think, well, we'll put it on sale, and then you'll sell a lot, that's great. But that usually happens as you're going out of business. If the price stays low for a long time, you're probably going to get out of that business and not sell any. So this is what a supply curve looks like. And you probably just finished a conversation talking about the supply of guns in the United States and the Dar market in uh, Pakistan. And recognizing that as supply increases, uh, the price can decrease for the gun. So that's one thing that's challenging about the law of supply. The other thing is that uh, the way that this graph is situated, when it increases, it looks like it goes down. I'll show you, show you what I mean. This is an increase in supply, right? It's below this line that looks like a decrease. So I always say for both demand and supply, an increase is to the right that way, a decrease is to the left in this way. If you ever think supply and demand up or down, it gets confusing because with supply, that's a big decrease, but it's above this, it's up. That's a decrease to the left, decrease in supply, increase in supply. Okay. Again, ceteris paribus, all other things being equal, a change in a price moves us along this curve. If I'm selling coffee and people are willing simply to pay a higher price for it, then I say, wonderful, I would like to supply a large quantity of it. And as people uh, are willing to pay less and less for their coffee, and the price goes down, I am just simply willing to supply less of that coffee until eventually I'm going to get out of the coffee business. Now, like yesterday, there's a couple things that can shift the entire supply curve. And we'll keep talking about coffee for this first one. So we'll talk about uh, coffee technology. Anybody out there like coffee? Yes. Okay, so let's increase the supply of coffee. Now, what do you think? Uh, let's talk to Declan. Declan, uh, what kind of technology could make coffee supply increased? Declan says, oh, greenhouses in Minnesota and um, take all of our garbage and make big landfill mountains because coffee needs warm weather and high altitudes. Yeah, perfect, Declan. If we had the technology to take all of our trash build mountains out of it, and then encapsulate it super cheaply with wonderful technology in a greenhouse, uh, then we could grow coffee in Minnesota, and that would increase the supply. At all prices, Minnesotan coffee, homegrown, there would be a larger quantity supplied. Right now, basically we can't supply much of anything because we don't have the technology to do it. But technology improves, and in fact, when you're talking about supply, Technology almost always improves. It's super rare, if non-existent, that technology would ever shift supply to the left. Why would anybody come up with a new technology that would hurt supply? So 
um, innovation, research, etc. That is always trying to improve technology to make things cheaper and easier to produce, making you capable of supplying more of them. So that's technology. It almost always reduces the cost of producing something and then allows people to supply more of it at a lesser cost. All right, Claudia, pick another product. Pianos. Nice. Uh, I've been practicing a lot of guitar at home, but I need to give you the piano this week. So, um, you know, in case you want to start supplying something, you could make your own YouTube videos on instruction on piano, and then you could sell those to me. See how that goes. Pianos. All right, what are inputs that go into pianos? Okay, right. For the majority of the history of the piano, ivory went into making the keys, um, the keyboard of the piano. And that's a really expensive input just because you have to get ivory from elephants. Um, it's a dangerous proposition, and the supply of elephants is low, meaning that the price of ivory is really high. Well, recently, oh, sorry, I should say the inputs are all the things that go into making a product, right? So if you're talking about pianos, let's just say that there's some metal for the pedals, there's a lot of wood, and there's some ivory, and then there's metal for the strings. Okay, so those are the inputs, metal, wood, and ivory. Now, if the cost of any of your inputs, in this case ivory, goes down, you can increase supply. You are able to produce a higher quantity of products at a cheaper price and increase supply. Okay, so in this case we'll say, uh, actually they've come up with fake ways or synthetic ways to make the ivory, or not ivory, just plastic, for piano keys, and that greatly reduces the cost of inputs, making us able to supply a much bigger quantity of pianos for a cheaper price. Supply of pianos increases. If, on the other hand, piano purists of the world got together, had a conference, and said, you cannot make a piano without using ivory, and then, actually, last week there was a big uh, international organization conference in Africa talking about limiting and banning ivory sales. Well, if there was super limited ivory in the world, which is probably the case, and piano purists said you can only make a piano with ivory, well, then the cost of inputs would probably be skyrocketing, making pianos available, but only at a very high price, much smaller quantity supplied, simply because it's incredibly expensive. That's how the supply can shift to the left. It's a decrease, even though it's way up here, right? So many air quotes in my videos. That's inputs. All right, the number of suppliers. Let's see, Alex, um, what is your favorite thing to do on the weekends? She says, shopping. That's her. Okay. What happens when there's more stores? More clothing stores. And you say, well, that's, the number of suppliers is actually increasing. And all these clothing stores, when there's a lot of them in one place, what do they usually do with their prices? Well, they're competing with each other, um, so usually the prices will decrease. So the number of suppliers increases the quantity supplied. As quantity supplied increases, there's more suppliers out there, there's more stores to go shopping at, they are competing with each other, they are reducing their prices. That is the number of suppliers. Next one, pick another product. This time we are gonna call on who else is in this class. Oh, Griffin, pick a product. Griffin says, choose. Okay. These are two things that governments can do to small businesses, or any business for that matter, that can change uh, their supply curves, right? So, taxes. This is one area where supply is similar to demand. Generally speaking, people don't like taxes. Businesses don't like to pay taxes, and households don't like to pay taxes. So if um, a shoe company has to pay greater taxes, that is essentially saying the cost of me making and selling this shoe is going to go up. Making the shoe, same price. But when I sell it, I have to add tax to it. That is going to make it more expensive for consumers to get these shoes which means that there are going to be fewer supplies. Supply is going to decrease. It's going to go to the left. 
because these items are now taxed, making it more expensive for these businesses to put these products on the market, they reduce the quantity of supply. All right, a subsidy, on the other hand, says, well, look, you live in Minnesota, it's really cold, people need the shoes, and um, we need to make sure that they're available and that they're available for cheap because people can't be walking around in the winter without any shoes on their feet. So the government is gonna subsidize shoes and say, look, company, I know it's really hard to make winter boots, uh, but we need them. And so we're gonna pay you half the cost of producing these boots. We're gonna subsidize them. The government's gonna give you money to allow you to produce them more cheaply. And the, these uh, Red Wing boot makers will say, great, I can actually then increase my supply of boots because the government is giving me a subsidy. So my supply of boots produced, put on the market, is gonna increase because of a government subsidy. Two more. Here we go. Pick another product. Well, let's say, let's do something with food. And we'll say, well, bread. Okay. People are finding out that they like the uh, no carbohydrates diets, and so they're not making any bread anymore. And so all of these suppliers of bread say, well, uh, nobody's buying any bread. We're not making any money. Are there other goods? Are there other products that we could supply instead? And so these factories that are producing bread decide instead that like people are down with, I don't know, tortillas, uh, because there's less calories in tortillas than there are in bread. So the supply of tortillas is going to increase, but this isn't a curve or graph for tortillas, this is for bread. So all of a sudden the supply of bread is gonna decrease because the bread factories, instead of making bread, are choosing to supply tortillas. So the demand, excuse me, the supply of bread is going to decrease because that manufacturer chose to produce an other good, something else. And the last one, expectations. Okay, well, we've got Hurricane Matthew on the Atlantic seaboard right now. And so uh, we know that people have expectations of what a hurricane does. And so what are some things, let's see, we'll call on, well, we'll call on Declan again. What are some expectations for things that need to get supplied after the hurricane? And he says, you know, sandwiches. So you would expect that people need food and shelter and water following a hurricane. And so they have the expectation that all of a sudden for the next two, three weeks, we are gonna need a greater supply of sandwiches. So this is something that hasn't changed with technology or the cost of producing sandwiches. Uh, there's the same number of sa sandwich suppliers. The government, unfortunately, is not subsidizing. They haven't declared a state of emergency. There's no subsidies for sandwiches. Same amount of taxes. Uh, they're not producing another good. They need these sandwiches, so what's changed? Expectations of how many sandwiches need to be supplied. Do we need more or less? We need more. And so suppliers simply say, we have to increase supply. There is going to be a greater need. People are going to consume these sandwiches. Let's increase the quantity of supply. So again, the only thing that changes is price. We stay on the original supply curve. The price increases, so does the quantity of supply. The price decreases, the quantity of supply goes up. Any of these things, on the other hand, can shift supply down to the left or up again to the right. If you have any questions as I walk over to this button to turn it off, you say, Matty, that's confusing. Can you have Matt make another video? And in fact, could you have him cut to the chase more and make it like 30 seconds long so he isn't talking so much? And I'd say, sure, absolutely. My pleasure.